Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. And Isabel, thank you. It's such a privilege, such an honor. Thank you for being here in India. You made your debut, Isabel, in 1971 and over 120 films. You've proved again and again that you're a fearless actor. Um, you were Oscar nominated for Elle, and Paul Verhoeven, the director of that film, said that he came to you because no American actress would be willing to take on such an immoral character. Clearly, being likable on screen or being relatable on screen is not a priority for you. So what is it that draws you to the roles that you do? Um, well, let's take the example for Elle, for, for instance. Um, I never thought she was an unlikable character. I always thought she was, to my eyes at least, and I hope I made it possible for the viewer's eyes as well, a very likable character. Um, of course, she's not, um, she's not an easy character, and the, the story in itself is certainly not a, it's a very complex story. It's a story of revenge, of revenge, of a lonely revenge. Uh, uh, she's a solitary woman, and she, to my eyes, have a certain amount of courage by taking this revenge all by herself, uh, including, of course, some of kind of what we uh, we would call in French a razor's age <laughs> uh, journey, of course, with with this man. Uh, but um, yeah, again, uh, like Elle and many other films, um, at first approach, I, I keep saying it's not the characters who are not like likable but it's the situations who are not likable and it's more about these characters and these people trying to survive in an unlikable context whether it is political or just social or whatever but it's it's more about how the individual relate to a certain situation or a certain environment you know when I read uh, your interviews and when you're asked about acting you almost make it sound easy you say it either comes or it doesn't. Um, you said in another interview that uh, you know what I do as an actress is really the story of the scorpion and the frog. Um, it's my nature. <laughs> so is it something that just comes when the director says action? Or how? what is your prep like if it's so spontaneous and so natural? Well, it, also, it has all to do b about, uh, first of all, the director. He's the, the key piece to the ensemble, and uh, I've been again privileged enough to work with really wonderful directors, and uh, so it's all about the, the kind of relationship you're going to be able to weave and to create with this director, and uh, so it, it it's all about trust, of course, and uh, uh, if you don't have this kind of in ingredients in the in the movie making, it makes it very very difficult. But if you have it, it makes it very easy in in a way. And uh, I think the most difficult moment is when you choose to do the film. That's difficult because you have to really uh, identify all the very, the various important reasons why you do a film and why you do a role. But once you've done that, it's like a, a thread you pull, and you just let it being pulled <laughs> actually, and you are passive active in that process. You are very active, but also passive in the way that the film goes by itself and the, and the film you are uh, it's it's of course you do a film but you are being done by the film as well in a way so it makes it uh, um, yes passive active you know there's something else that you said which i thought was amazing you talked about you said that you become an actor um, to be perhaps well known but not to be known uh, and yet the films you do are a reflection of, somewhere a reflection of who you are. So as an actor, Isabel, how do you find that line between not being known and yet having it reflect who you are? Well, it's, it's all about what we call the paradox of the actor, uh, that a concept w that was being explored by one of great philosophers in France, you know, <laughs> Uh, Diderot, <laughs> and uh, it's, yeah, I mean, when you make movies, of course, you have. It's not like well, it's yes, it could be like writing a book actually. Even the writer, even if he speaks by about himself, you have the mask or the, the the screen of the of the fiction that reveal who you are, but in a way 
does not really reveal it, you know, otherwise I would, you know, so it, it, you, it's hard to, and finally it's not really important uh, to say who you are, uh, but in fact, the yeah, screen is, a, I mean, making movies is a good way to m make yourself being uh, known and not so known, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> as you very quite rightly put it. What do you like on set, Isabel? Are you, um, are you somebody who sort of prepares a lot? Do you like to leave room for improvisation? Do you like a lot of direction? After so many movies, what do you like? Um, it's not about what I like, actually. It's, not, it's more about what, what it is exactly, movie making, and whether I like it or not. Uh, I think you, you, it's nothing that you can anticipate. So uh, the, the, the idea of preparing in when it comes to movie making for me is very very uh, unsure uh, because you cannot really prepare something you cannot anticipate because acting is really doing it as you do it and it's nothing that you can anticipate and that's it and it, it's nothing that you can think over after it's being done you know it's really including all the elements of a situation as you do it and that's it so so it's truly in the moment it's really the moment yes absolutely for me and that's the beauty of uh, of acting and it it it, can, it includes the rhythm it it includes also the relationship to your partner i mean you cannot anticipate what your partner is going to do by definition I, if you cannot anticipate what you are going to do it's certainly even more difficult to anticipate what the person in front of you is going to do and and uh, how in he's going to answer you so for me it's it's all of so of course yes you can prepare the op the costumes uh, everything every possible and imaginable thing that you can prepare and this is very important actually yes the costumes because these are the first signs you give to the exterior eye or to the viewer's uh, eye so that's important but nothing else you just uh, and nothing else because it's also the way you are going to be filmed and whether you're going to be filmed in close-up or in the full length shot or in sequence shot or uh, a series of, of, of many cuts it's and it makes the whole that's what really shapes you shape your really shapes your performance have you changed um, a lot, Isabel, as an actor over the five decades, or are your creative instincts still what you began with? Mm, I don't think I have changed, no. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think so, no. Mm, no, I, I, I don't feel like I improved or... Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, actors in India, especially mainstream actors, stars, have a massive cultural influence. Um, and there's an ongoing debate about what is the moral responsibility of an actor in the choices that he or she makes. Um, when you're choosing a film, do you have to worry about the messaging that you're putting out there? Your mm -hmm. filmography is, is sociopaths and self-mutilator and, and you know all sorts of really intriguing dark characters. What do you think is the responsibility of an actor? Well, first of all, I don't think you send messages by doing films. You know, Michael Haneke, my good friend Michael Haneke has a very funny line about that. He said, if you want to send messages, you have the post office for that, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I'm happy to quote Michael Haneke. And uh, so I don't necessarily have messages and I don't have any other responsibility than to do a good film. <laughs> that's the, the, the good responsibility. That's my responsibility. So when you're making a decision to do a character, you have never thought about, will this influence anyone? You know, there was this recent debate about the Joker as well, that what is the messaging the film is putting out there? You know, is it going to encourage people to go out and kill people? So it's an ongoing debate in, in what you can say in your art. But you're saying that an artist should not have any other responsibility except do a good film. Yes, in a way, and uh, and uh, uh, you, you can you can see that uh, a, a film is a, is a, is very subjective in a way, and it's also left to everybody's subjectivity. So it's very difficult to establish a, a moral line. And so I mean, some f some viewer and and I think a good film also is a film that being uh, not well, it, which is going to be seen by everybody but which is going to be understood in a different way according to 
who watches it, you know, and that's the the um, the value of a of a great film. So I'm not here to you know to establish a <laughs> precise line, you know, between who is going to like it, who is not going to like it. Um, most of it, most of all, uh, m m very often what you do is object of debate, and uh, it's the same in literature, it's the same in painting, it's the same in any kind of expression. You know, the other um, big ongoing debate is sort of the hand wringing about the future of cinema itself. You know, the whole sort of Scorsese versus Marvel, uh, Netflix versus, you know, streaming versus theatrical. As somebody who's made movies for five decades, how do you feel about the future of film? Well, uh, basically, I'm quite optimistic, so I don't want to think that we big. We certainly started a, a, a new era with with uh, the you know the the series and the. But I still believe that um, uh, cinema has a future. Yes, I think so. Maybe. Um, the 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 accessibility to films has has changed and it's it's making it's more and more difficult of course to make people watch a certain type of films but I still believe in it yes because I think that you have to uh, invent uh, cinema is a language and it has to remain an individual language uh, and uh, I think it's it will be kept alive if you still invent new forms and new languages, so I still believe that it has a future. And where where are you on the the Marvel versus Scorsese uh, debate about whether Marvel films are cinema or not? Oh, I have no opinion. On that. Uh, and my microphone doesn't have any opinion about <laughs> that. <laughs> um, when you've got so much experience, when you have done over 120 films, um, is it harder and harder to be surprised by the material that comes to you? It's uh, no, it's uh, it's uh, n not only it's not harder and harder, but it's uh, it's it. Let's say it's never hard because I think when you do what I do, it's like a it's it's each time like you do it for the first time because it's uh, it doesn't include any theory or any abstract concept. It includes. Uh, um you know people and uh, and uh, so it y you cannot it cannot be hard as you might think it is it's uh, it's the it's the contrary because it's like you are doing it for the first time each time so there was never a moment in all these years as well where you just felt like i've fallen out of love with this i don't want to do this anymore no <laughs> really the, so the passion's been consistent from day one I think yes. I mean, I, c I don't even understand the question actually. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And what are you most looking forward to in India? Uh, well, I wish uh, I would um, know more about Indian cinemas. Actually, I mean, as you probably know, here in my country, there in my country, we we know a lot about you know. In for us, Indian cinema is very often um, symbolized or incarnated by, on one hand. Satya Jitre, you know, who is a great master, and on the other hand, Bollywood, but yeah. we don't know a lot about Bollywood. We know some of it, but not a lot. As far as I am concerned, uh, of course, as many French people, I, I, w I watched Lunchbox by Ritesh Patra, which was wonderful. So, <laughs> And any advice for all the aspiring actors in the room? Uh, I'm not very good with advices, but just curiosity, I would say. I'm a very curious person, and in French we say it's a very ni uh, bad default. I think it's a quality. Yeah. I'm very, very curious. I want to know everything <laughs> about everybody, <laughs> and uh, and uh, so and it really it certainly uh, gave me a, a kind of energy to be so curious. <laughs> that was amazing, Isabel. Thank you so much. It's been thank so wonderful, you. and thank you to all of you. Thank you. <laughs>